What's going on you guys? TBR here, back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video. And in today's video, we are going to be shining the spotlight on Boss Syndrome Leona and running her through her paces in all things PvE to show you guys just how stupid this character actually is. But before we get into all of that, if you guys are new here and you enjoy daily King of Fighters All-Star content such as this, then smash that like button and subscribe, sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and get into the spotlight for Boss Syndrome Leona. So starting out with the typing and the leadership ability, Boss Syndrome Leona is going to be a purple defensive unit with a leadership ability that increases Boss Syndrome fighters attack by 45% and their power charge rate by 20%. As we've talked about here on the channel numerous times, the leadership ability is going to be the type of leadership that you look for for all of your top tier characters. So great stuff there, and it's particularly good because it is going to be good for all of your boss syndrome fighters. So she's going to be able to slot into a lot of very strong teams, so long as you have a lot of these limited banner characters. And then if we take a look at the typing, not a whole lot to talk about there. She is a purple defensive type unit, which doesn't necessarily get called for for anything specifically in the game, but at the same time for a character that's outputting the amount of damage that this one is, the fact that she does have that extra little bit of padding thanks to the fact that she is a defensive based unit is going to help her survivability out quite a bit, and this is one of the big ways where she sets herself apart from her banner mate boss syndrome gonets because she is definitely not going to be anywhere near as squishy while being able to output better damage overall. So great stuff there. When we take a look at the tags, she is going to be a boss syndrome unit, of course, a female fighter, a defensive type, an all-star fighter, an Akari team member, and then finally, an Orochi clan member. So she's going to have plenty of options for teammates. This is going to make her very, very versatile. We'll talk about that more as we get into this, but good stuff yet again. Now moving on to the cores. So leading off here, you guys are going to notice that Leona does have that 30% power charge rate increase that we have seen on a lot of these limited banner characters, including her banner mate Boss Syndrome Gonets. You'll love to see it, and it's great stuff to lead off here. Next up, we are going to have a critical damage rate increase of plus 18%, and we're also going to have an increase to attack a continuous damage enhanced to our burn damage, a skill enhanced to our strike damage output, and an increase to our critical rate by 3.2%. Then when we get into the exclusive cores, we're going to start here with Bloody Fate. This is going to increase the target's damage received by 35% for 5 seconds upon landing the S1 on a cooldown of 15 seconds. So, as we go through this kit, you guys will notice a theme. This character is all about damage ramp and doing more damage, and to that effect, Boss Syndrome Leona has achieved her goals and is an incredible damage dealer in the King of Fighters All-Star, and likely to be the highest damage ceiling of any character that we've ever seen. Next up, she's going to decrease the active skill cooldowns by 0.5 seconds upon landing an attack on a burning target. So Boss Syndrome Leona does have that latent, inherent active skill cooldown decrease on her kit. Hers is going to be in the form of landing an attack on a burning target. Shouldn't be very hard to do considering, so another really good core. And then finally, she's going to increase her active skill damage on burning targets by 110%. As I already mentioned, this character just likes to do damage, and this core is going to help her achieve that goal. So great stuff there. Now we're going to move on to the final exclusive core, and that's going to be Nightmare Revival. This is going to cast that shield that absorbs damage for 7 seconds when attacked if her HP is 50% or more, and removes the shield when attacked 20 times on a cooldown of 15 seconds. And then she has the exclusive for the Boss Syndrome Volume 4 fighters, and we all know what that does. So that shield, as we have already established, is completely OP. That shield is going to be the best save in the game at the moment, and it has become the standard for a lot of these limited banner characters. In general, not much to say about these cores outside of the fact that they are very, very good. I would say that Leona definitely has the better cores of the two new characters. However, as we've established, both of these characters are completely and utterly busted, so what can you do? So that is going to be the course. Next up, let's move on and talk about the skills. 
So first up here we have the basic string, and Boss Syndrome Leona's basic string is going to be fairly quick, but the nicest thing about it is the fact that it does have off the ground very early on, so this is going to help you continue and restart your combos extremely easily. So overall, very good stuff. Both of these characters that we've talked about from this banner have great basic strings. Next we have the S1, and that is going to give you Hyper Armor, as well as a 70% chance to remove the target's Super or Hyper Armor upon landing a hit on a target with Super or Hyper Armor, and this is going to be an interrupt that is limited to being Airborne. So as we talked about with Gonitz, that Airborne interrupt is extremely good, especially to save yourself when you're being comboed or you got caught. This is going to be a 5-hit S1 with off the ground and full screen, although I would say that it's best used at mid to close range because when you're talking full screen, it is going to be a little bit on the slower end, so you will get caught or dodged very easily. But overall, this is going to be one of her overall best skills because it is going to have that built-in interrupt to save you, as well as giving you that hyper armor. So you guys are going to be relying on this quite a bit to keep her in the fight and get her away from any bad positioning. And overall, this is a really good skill and one that we have seen be kind of standard on a lot of these limited banner characters. Next up we have the S2, which is going to increase the target's damage received by 27% for 8 seconds upon landing a skill, and it applies Infernal Flame. So in general, this ends up being my favorite skill for Leona. It is also going to be 5 hits, it's going to have off the ground, it's going to be full screen, and it is also going to be very, very fast. This is going to be a skill that is going to be very good, especially whenever we're talking about mobbing or PBAI. And in general, this is the skill that I lay back on when it comes to a lot of those types of modes, where I'm just trying to clear out mobs or I'm just trying to take down a single target character like a PBAI. So this is a really good skill, and I could say that it's better than the rest of them, but honestly, they're all going to be really good, so I'm not going to go that far. But I will say that as fast as this thing is with the range that it has with off the ground, this is a very dangerous skill and one that I really like a lot. And rounding out the kit, we have the S3, which is going to increase our attack by 55% of our defense for 7 seconds when using a skill, so she has a huge defense to attack conversion on the S3. This is also going to deal additional damage equal to 50% of attack upon landing one on a burning target, and then finally apply sphere to the enemy for 3 seconds upon landing a skill, guard included. This is going to be Leona's barrier skill, it has stagger and off the ground, and as we said with Gonitz's barrier skill, very broken in mobbing. Moving on to the finishers, the core finisher is going to be a bit wonky in my opinion, but we'll talk more about that later. It's going to be on the average side as far as length at 5 to 6 seconds, but the nice thing about this is this does have burn explosion, meaning that you can control when you explode your burn, which you'll love to see when you have explosion on a kit. And finally, the 3PG finisher is going to be longer at 7 to 8 seconds, as well as increasing your attack by 10% and your critical rate by 3.6% for 10 seconds upon using it, the same as we saw with Boss Syndrome Gonads. Now with the skills out of the way, let's move over to card sets. So for those of you who want to see all of these card sets in action, I am leaving a link in the description to a wonderful video that breaks all of these down and shows you guys the damage output comparison for all of them. But needless to say, there's some very interesting options for Leona that have emerged as the top contenders on DPS. The first one is going to be the Girls Who Sing Love Song set that you can get as a 5-star set on the Unified Card banner. And then we have the Akari set from the new Boss Syndrome Volume 4 banner coming in at number 2. And rounding out the top 3, we have Time for a Medical Checkup, which is another 5-star set that you can get off the Unified Card banner. So in general, buffing her strike skill is going to be the best way to go for Leona. So you guys may want to look at these two sets that are going to be these five star sets if you don't have the Akari team set because they're easily transcendable as five stars and wonderful options for her overall damage output. Now as far as stones are concerned, I always recommend going with attack stones here even with the defense to attack conversion. As you guys may be aware if you've been paying attention to previous videos, I did pick defensive stones for my Leona and in this footage you're going to be seeing her using those. However, I only did that for YouTuber reasons. I'm going to be swapping those off for attack stones once I get another unpairing plug. I've already started doing so, but definitely go attack stones you guys. I'm just going to be using that 
defensive set for later videos doing damage comparisons, but I digress. Now, when it comes to mobbing and bossing, Boss Syndrome Leona, like most any Boss Syndrome character, is going to be an absolute behemoth here. However, she does have something that is going to set her apart, and that is going to be the fact that she has that S3 that is going to have fear on it. So this is going to be absolutely massive for her overall mobbing, because with, as we've established with that barrier skill, it is an off the ground, it is a stagger, and hers even has fear on it. So basically what that means is this character is going to be able to just bully any and all mobs that come in front of her and she can just do a ton of damage once they're feared so in general i have nothing bad to say about her here in fact she's one of the best characters i've ever played for that mode and then when it comes to just bossing in general, thanks to the fact that Leona can output as much damage as she can, once you get your awakening rotation, really none of these general bosses are going to be able to survive her. She's going to go in, she's going to be able to rotate skills extremely well, she's going to have a lot of damage ramp, she's going to have some nice crits, and in general, this is a character that I really can't complain about at all in either of these facets of the game, because she's just so good at what she's trying to accomplish, and even though it's pretty simple she's just trying to do a lot of damage it's pretty impressive to watch so in general boss syndrome leona passes with flying colors here and gets an a plus so now we're going to move on to pvai and i as you guys can imagine this character she just is amazing there's really not a whole lot to say here she's pretty much unkillable as long as you're smart with how you're playing she's extremely quick she has great range, she has wonderful off the ground potential, she knocks these characters down like it's nothing, she has fear, what more could you really want? This character, pretty near unkillable, just as long as you're paying attention, so don't fall asleep and you'll be just fine. And next up here we're going to talk about Immortal Performance. So her performance in Immortals, as you guys probably guessed and have already experienced if you have this character, is phenomenal. Boss Syndrome Leona can pretty much slot into as many teams as she sees fit, thanks to the fact that she does have that wonderful leadership ability, as well as having some great tags. So she's going to be very versatile in that regard. She has a nice, long 3PG finisher, and she's going to be able to output as much damage as she can, as well as being extremely tanky. So in general, Boss Syndrome Leona is going to be another top tier limited banner character for Immortals. As we've seen, this becomes a theme with a lot of these limited banner characters anymore. It seems like once they release a new limited banner character, they just add on to an already growing pool of characters that are going to make these Immortals lives a living hell. So in general, you guys, I see no reason not to use her in Immortals if you have her. She's going to prove to be one of those characters that you're going to try and slot into every team that you have here just for the fact that she is able to output as much damage as she can so she can almost carry you through these things she's not going to be able to solo these things by any stretch of the imagination as far as her damage output is concerned but at the same time if you give her a competent team to work around her she's going to put in all the work you could ask for and then some so really there's not much here that i could say in the negative if i had anything negative to say it would be the fact that kind of like boss syndrome gonads her core finisher is kind of goofy and not necessarily my favorite thing in the world but that's just a nitpick in the end boss syndrome leona going to be a tier one immortal dungeon performance unit and another one to add to the pile so next up, let's talk about Guild Raid. So let's get this out of the way real quick. Boss Syndrome Leona is likely the best solo artist in the game currently available for Guild Raid solos. There's really nothing that I could say in regards to her solo performance that hasn't already been said. Boss Syndrome Leona boasts the ability to go in by herself without the pertinent dot and be able to one key and one key easily every single difficulty of both of the bosses currently available in this mode and does it with ease. Part of this is thanks to the fact that she does have that shield as well as being a defensive type unit so she is going to protect herself very well while she's outputting as much damage as she is and in general this character is going to be able to get you over a billion damage damage in lunatic difficulty by herself with ease so that should go to show you guys just how dumb this character actually is 
much like Boss Syndrome Gonitz before her in that spotlight when we talked about the fact that these characters are a bit cancerous. I do still think that that is the case with her as well, if not more so, just for the fact that being a defensive based unit, she's going to be able to go in and output more damage than pretty much everything else in the game. So that means that she's not only going to be able to be tanky, but she's also going to be a DPS machine. And then against Nightmare Geese, again, she can one-key him in every single difficulty by herself. She can do over a billion damage without a problem here. And so the real, really the only thing that I could levy against her is the same thing I levied against Boss Syndrome Gonitz, and that is going to be the fact that, like him, her core finisher leaves a lot to be desired. It's not necessarily the best thing in the world. As you guys can see, these boss can still move around after you've used it they can still use their attacks and so on and so forth so that can leave you in a vulnerable position at times but really that's the only nitpick that I have with her outside of that the fact that she can interrupt while airborne and get hyper armor is also a big deal because she can save herself so in general you guys if you need help in guild raid this is the best overall character that you could pick outside of gonitz and probably better in general and there you have it, you guys, the spotlight for Boss Syndrome Leona. So in general, Boss Syndrome Leona, I don't think any of her fans would have ever assumed she would find herself in this position, but here we are. As with stands right now, Leona is going to be probably at this point the best character in the game for just general PvE content, and probably the best character in the game in general. At the end of the day, this is a character that can output obscene amounts of damage, as well as being a defensive type, which is going to mean that she's going to have a lot of survivability that a lot of these glass cannons and DPS machines that we've had for a while cannot boast. And in general, there's a few gaps in her game. Like I've mentioned, her core finisher isn't necessarily the greatest, but at the end of the day, you can always find a reason to nitpick a character, but when they're this good, they are just nitpicks. So if you guys are fans of this character, be happy, they did her right, and in fact, they probably overdid it in a big way because again, both of these new boss syndrome characters, are, in my opinion, are going to be bad for the game in general because of the power creep they've introduced, but I've already talked about that at length, so we're not gonna get into that here. I just want you guys to know, if you want these characters, if you like either of these characters, this is the time to pull. Make sure that you guys try to get them if you want them, because you are probably going to kick yourselves if you miss out on them. Take it from all the people out there months ago when I recommended SS Keo and they skipped him, and then for months afterwards were complaining about the fact that they didn't go for him. Well, this is going to be a similar situation, I get the feeling, if you skip out on either of these. So if you like them, make sure you guys pick them up. Good luck on your summons. But both of them are tier zero, and both of them are here to stay, at least for the time being until Netmarble decides that they're going to crank the power creep up yet again. So that is going to do it for today's video, you guys. I hope you all found it informative. If you did, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. I'll see you all in tomorrow's video, but until then, you all enjoy your days. Peace. Continue.